California-based Anduril Industries has been scooping up defense contracts left and right in recent years. And now, this firm that's primarily known for their advanced and highly autonomous drone systems is looking to apply that expertise to precision-guided ordnance. Namely, in a new line of air-breathing cruise missiles they call the Barracuda M-Line. Now, the Barracuda M-Line consists of three different weapons, the M100, the M250, and the M500. And I've spoken at length about the M500 before, which is meant to serve as a low-cost alternative or supplement to America's very big and very pricey JASM line of air-launched cruise missiles. But the much smaller M100 may actually pack a bigger punch, at least in terms of of battlefield effect. You see, while the M500 is less capable than the JASM cruise missiles it would fly alongside, the M100 absolutely outclasses the weapons it could feasibly replace. You see, the Barracuda M100 was designed to be carried by rotorcraft, like the AH-64 Apache gunship or the AH-1 Cobra, in very much the same way these platforms carry Hellfire missiles today. You see, the M100 is very close in size to the long-serving AGM-114 Hellfire. And truth be told, it's even closer in size to the AGM-179 joint air-to-ground missile that's meant to replace the Hellfire. The M100 is about 70 inches long with a 6-inch diameter, and it weighs in at roughly 110 pounds as compared to the AGM-114, which is 64 inches long with a 7-inch diameter and around 104 to 108 pounds, or the new AGM-179, which is 70 inches long with a 7-inch diameter and an undisclosed total weight. So as you can see, these weapons are pretty comparable in size, and in the promotional material Anduril has released for the M100, they show it in front of an AH-1 Cobra, with what sure looks to be the shoe, or the connector you'll find on today's Hellfire missiles for them to be mounted on rotorcraft, like the Apache. But while the M100 is about the same size as the Hellfire or the Jagum, it packs a much bigger punch. The Hellfire missile carries a roughly 20-pound high-explosive warhead, and the Jagum is expected to carry about the same. And Anduril initially told me their M100 would carry a 35-pound warhead, but that has since been increased to 40 pounds, twice the size of the warhead and the Hellfire. And while the Hellfire's maximum range in the best of conditions is maybe 6.8 miles, and the Jagum may be able to reach all the way out to 10 miles, the M100 can carry that 40-pound warhead to targets 138 miles away. Now, this is possible because it carries a completely different type of propulsion system than you'll find in weapons like the Hellfire, which is powered by a chemical rocket. The M100, on the other hand, is powered by a very small, air-breathing turbojet engine, the same sorts of propulsion systems you'd find powering a tactical aircraft. In fact, the only place this weapon would fall short of the Hellfire is in maximum speed, as the Hellfire is known to top out at around Mach 1.3, and Anduril says their M100 is limited to high subsonic speeds. Think 0.9 Mach or so. But again, the M100 comes with more than 20 times the range of a Hellfire for only two more pounds of carry weight. Now, depending on which iteration Hellfire we're talking, they have a per unit price of around $150,000 per missile. And the newer Jagum is more like $320,000 per shot. And we don't know how much the M100 would ultimately cost because this weapon hasn't been put into production yet. But there's a solid chance it could even be cheaper. And that's because Anduril designed this weapon from the onset for rapid, simplified production. In fact, they say this entire weapon can be assembled using fewer than 10 hand tools, and those tools are the sorts you'd find laying around any old garage. In other words, it would be very easy to train personnel to assemble these weapons. And Anduril says, because of that simplicity, they can double their production capacity anytime the U.S. needs a surge of precision-guided munitions. Now, this weapon, like its bigger sisters, the M250 and M500, have already seen pretty significant testing in-house at Anduril. But now, they're shopping these weapons to the DoD, and to be honest, I think they've got a solid shot at securing a contract.